Greetings and good afternoon, everyone. We will now commence session three of our public forum today. Before I start, I'd like everyone to remain silent as I introduce the next few speakers for this session. Our session three is called Winter National Unity, and we have our moderator, Tan Sri Rafia Salim. A bit of background of her. She is the former president for Muslim Women's Action Society, Pratiwi, with almost three decades of experience in the academic and human resource fields. She was the Assistant Secretary General for Human Resource Management at the United Nations Headquarters in New York and as Vice Chancellor slash President of University of Malaya. She was the first woman to be appointed a University President in Malaysia. She also served as General Manager HR of Maybank, Assistant Governor of Malaysia's Central Bank and as a Lecturer and Dean of the Faculty of Law, University of Malaya. Rafia is now a chairman and a member of the boards of several public listed companies and of course is a member of G25. And I get everyone to give a round of applause as I invite our moderator onto the stage please. Our first speaker, Dr. Dr. Johan Arifin Saman has worked with several multinational corporations and has served 16 years with ExxonMobil in senior management positions. He took an early retirement in 2004 and was invited by the Sabah State Government to join Sabah Foundation as Deputy Director. Apart from being in charge of the education portfolio, the core business of the organization, he was tasked to spearhead the oil and gas development for the state. Dr. Johan sits on the board of Shell Timor SV and is executive director of his own technology company, Dragonfly Robotic SV. He's a leader in unmanned aerial vehicle. On his personal side, he is a columnist at Daily Express Kota Kinabalu and the Malaysia Insight. He writes mostly on politics of the day and current affairs. He is also a member of G25 and the Borneo G20. Dr. Johan Bowles has an MBA from University of Hull and a DBA from University of South Australia. Let's put our hands together and invite him on stage. Our next speaker, Mr. Dao Zan Tan Ho Chiu, is the President of Federation of Taoist Associations Malaysia and holds many positions such as member of JKM BKA, the Action Committee for the Promotion of Religious Understanding and Harmony. He is also the Vice President of Malaysian Consultative Council of Buddhism, Christianity, Hinduism, Sikhism and Taoism. Mr. Daozan has also held other positions as the past President of Lions Club of KL, the founding Chairman of KL Lions Renal Centre and the founding member of the Board of Trustees in KL Lions Foundation. We must invite Mr. Dowser to the stage. And our third speaker, Mr. Gerald Joseph, is a commissioner of Suhakam and has been a human rights defender and trainer consultant at both local and international levels for the last 20 years. He specializes in human rights issues concerning the rights of indigenous peoples, elimination of racial discrimination, economic, social, and cultural rights, as well as human rights-based approach in development. Mr. Joseph has held several positions, including the chair of the Regional Steering Committee for ASC slash ASEAN People's Forum in 2015, and served as a member of various human rights organizations, including the Commonwealth Foundation, Asian South Pacific Bureau of Adult Education, Asia Pacific NGO Steering Committee of World Conference Against Racism. Currently, Mr. Joseph is a board member and advisor of the Anti-Racism and Non-Discrimination Program of Pusat Komunikasi Masyarakat Sendirian Bahad, Pusat Komas. He was also one of the senior civil society members who led the Malaysian NGOs reporting to the University Periodic, Universal Periodic Review Working Group in Geneva. He's also engaged with key stakeholders during Malaysia's previous UPR process. Mansri, all yours. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. 
Um, before I invite our speakers, I beg your indulgence uh, to allow me a few minutes to share with you uh, my own experience of living in a society that is disunited and the, the harm it could do. And this, this is based on my university days where I spent about seven years in Northern Ireland in the midst of all the sectarian violence. Um, I was living through the Black Friday, all the bombings, the shootings. What caused that violence in Northern, Northern Ireland was uh, the division between the Catholics and the Protestants. They all never mixed. They went to different schools. Catholics go to Catholic schools, and Protestant goes to the state schools. So they all didn't meet until university days. And university really only 5% of the population. So the other 95% never know each other. So as, as we know the Malay saying, tak kenal maka tak cinta. When you do not know the other, the other party, you get very suspicious. And I worry because of what is happening with our education system. I would hate that one day something that happened in Northern Ireland could happen here. Uh, my grandson went to Standard One a couple of weeks ago in St. John's. In his class, there, there isn't a single Chinese child. There, there are about five or six Indian children, but no Chinese at all. What happened to our education system? In my days, when I was in Victoria Institution, for example, we had all the races. But now our children are not mixing. The only time looks like the way it's going, we have the division by the types of school. We also have the div division be between the haves and the have not. The haves go to private schools and the have not goes to government schools or the national type. Um, that is one of those worries that I have as a grandmother in terms of what, what is the nation going to be for my children and my grandchildren. Um, I, I would like to invite our first speaker, uh, Dr. Johan, and uh, I'm sure we will have a very interesting aspect from him since he's from East Malaysia. So, Dato. Good afternoon. I prepared some charts actually, but I think I'll do away with it. Uh, do I see you'll, you'll fall asleep for all these um, numbers, statistics, and so on? I'm a bit nervous speaking in front of you because there's so many eminent persons here, Tansri Sharif. In Sabah, we are only one or two eminent persons. I'm one of them. Sorry, let me sort myself out first. Okay, the, the topic um, that was given to me was uh, national unity. And um, I like to um, uh, talk about national unity from the East Malaysian perspective. I just um, came from Penang, actually, by Penang, where the uh, Penang Institute invited me uh, to be on a panel of speakers. And um, <clears throat> the topic was about our, our current uh, election, and they talk about Islamization, Bumiputraism, and um, Malay nationalism, which is a bit 
alien to us you know, because we don't talk in those terms. But um, as, as the talk ended and all that, and I was very frank in my speech that day, and um, <clears throat> my wife frightened me when I went back. She says, you should not talk about those things like that, you know, because people might be offended um, <clears throat> in Penang. So um, there, is, there is a stout difference because in, in Sabah, we can talk uh, freely about certain things, about religion, about race, and laugh at each other. But here, um, it's, it's getting a bit serious. So let me <clears throat> uh, take you through um, uh, some of the differences that, that we see between East and West. And um, I don't know, have you ever thought about what binds us as a nation, Malaysia? Uh, is it our national flag? Is it a national anthem? Is it rising the, the one finger, one merdeka, you know, which is quite famous. We, we take selfies with that now, photographs, official photographs, with one finger in the air. I'm not so sure. And I, I, I think we should spend some time thinking about, about that. I mean, what binds us as a nation? And um, the only thing I can think of um, uh, that can gel us as a nation is uh, the, the Rukun Nangara, you know, uh, the supremacy of the constitu constitution and the rule of law and so on, belief in God. But nobody talks about Rukun Nangara today as much as 1MDB, right? Uh, <laughs> and that has overtaken already all these this, uh, um, Rukun Nangara things that we, we um, stood before in school and, and, and recited by heart, I think. So what, what else that binds us together? I think sometimes sports do bind us together as a nation, like badminton or soccer. Uh, soccer. So, but, you know, badminton still, uh, is still a prominent sport, but soccer, I don't know, we like, you know, Myanmar beats us or, you know, all that funny, funny nations beats us these days, so it's no longer a binding uh, sport, okay? So, um, political preferences aside, I, I, I think, uh, if you want to talk, talk about unity and pride and all that, I would say during Tun Mahathir's time, we were that United Nation and a proud nation. And uh, <clears throat> we had the tallest building in the world. We are on the way to become the most advanced nation. And we had a recalcitrant prime minister who stood up against Western powers. At that time, nobody knows what the word recalcitrant is, and everybody went to look in the dictionary and found out it's something else. And um, <clears throat> we have a Department of National Unity and Integration, headed by Sabahan, uh, uh, Tansri Joseph Kurup. And it, it seems that um, nothing much has come out of it. Uh, but if you look at it, um, I think Malaysia is, is leaning towards uh, integration, then as, assimilation, you know, like Indonesia, they assimilate everybody, that they speak one language and all that, and they don't have any uh, identity, identity anymore as a race. But I think Malaysia is different. We want to integrate people from, from the East and the West. And if you recall, we had Malaysia Ferry one time, and. Um, it was, it was a good program. I don't know why we stopped it. And, you know, we had people coming over from Peninsula Malaysia, and Sabahans going over there, bringing over the cars and driving all over the country. Unfortunately, the um, ship burned down and got, it caught fire somewhere, and then we've forgotten about it. But it, Asia has done the job now, and I think people travel more uh, because of Asia it, within the country, but still, I think, only 60% of Malaysians from this side have ever been to Sabah, which is quite sad because every time I get into a taxi, I, I, I do the poll, you know, I ask them, have you been to Sabah, have you been? And many of them have not, okay? And, but Malaysians here prefer to go to Thailand, they go to Myanmar, or wherever, the, the closest neighbor, but except East Malaysia. And we have a beautiful country, you know, much better than, than many, many country, neighboring countries that you see or, or visit. So if you want to know more um, uh, where we are now in terms of national unity, unity between East and West, um, I'll ask you a simple question. You know that, that, that game that American TV, 
who's smarter than a fifth grader kind of thing. Um, I like to play that game sometimes and, and ask some of my West Malaysian friends you know, certain questions. So I say, when was Malaysia formed? Uh, they'll say, oh, August 31st. I say, wrong. You know, it's, uh, the answer is September 16, 1963. This is still a, a big issue to us. You know? The dates are important. You cannot say the dates is not important because that's part of our history. And don't try and change history because history is history, okay? It's permanent, all right? And um, unless you want to be a liar and tell a different story, that's okay, you know? And how old is Malaysia? Okay, you just celebrated your 60 years. And, uh, and, but actually, Malaysia is 54 years, all right? And um, when was Malaysia Day uh, declared a holiday? You had the first holiday probably in 1950s, a public holiday in 57, all right? But Malaysia Day had its first public holiday when Najib declared it in 2009. Okay, so we had already Malaysia since 1963. We only declared it as a national holiday in 2009. That's crazy, right? So where is Malaysia Day celebrated? Um, is it in federal territory or is Malaysian states? Well, the last one, do you know where it was? It was in Kota Kinabalu. The previous to that, it was in Sarawak. You know, I mean, I can't remember that Malaysia Day was held in Kuala Lumpur in a big way as Merdeka Day. So <clears throat> you can see um, what I'm trying to get at. You know, our history is so disjointed. You know, we all think history is um, <clears throat> in, in different dates and different time zones. And um, so how, how can we be united? And, uh, and um, if, if we, we have a different take on history, all right? I mean, you go into a room, you could talk 1957, 1963. How can we be united if we can't agree on one particular date? And um, how can we have national unity? When I go to the immigration department, I have to fill in the forms. And it says there, Malay, Chinese, Indian, and then done line line. I mean, I look. I, I, I'm a person. I have a heritage. I, I, uh, I mean, I can tell you about my heritage. I got Filipino blood. I got Malay blood. I got Kadazan Dusun blood. I got Chinese blood. That's what Sabahan is all about. It's the melting pot. You know, I, I write. I wrote an article. I said uh, it's easier to identify. Oh, yeah, you know, Malay from Kelang or Ipoh Mari. But to explain my heritage, I probably need a whole day. No, to explain. But in the form, it's just line, line, done, line, line. And I mean, it, it's, it's a disgrace, disgrace, because we are, we are people. Why should I be others, you know? I, I mentioned this in Penang, uh, you know, is there, yeah. There's always an attempt to fit the three racial backgrounds into a Malaysian narrative. The narrative is always Malay, Chinese, Indian, in that order. Okay, I can give you some good examples, and you should check it out. Namwi, I mean, you know Namwi, right? He produced a famous video that had one over a million or two million hits. And um, <clears throat> I watched it 20 times to just make sure I, I heard it right. And, you know, he, he's talking about 60th days, 60th celebration, 60 years celebration. And then in the end, if you replay it hundreds of times, it says, Happy Malaysia Day. Now that that's, sounds very strange. You're talking about Merdeka 60 days, uh, 60 years, and you got Malaysia Day celebration. Happy Malaysia Day. What an idiot! Okay? And um, but I can't I can't blame him. But I mean, this is the narrative that uh, that uh, West Malaysians like to portray and tell and teach. All right, that Malaysia is actually 60 years, which is not true. Right. So um, there's another uh, example Petronas said two years ago, Aki in the Longhouse. Petronas always runs this ad, make you emotionally uh, unstable, and you cry, and you know, this, this is, you know, they like to do all this sentimental stuff, you know, which is which just a waste of time. And then they had this Aki in Longhouse. And what happened? They brought the Malay Chinese Indian to the Longhouse, all right? They can't bring the Iban to the, to Kuala Lumpur, all right, because it's too expensive maybe. So they decided to bring the three 
races, the main races, into the longhouse. That, that is another, another irritation that we see, you know, in terms of narrative. And um, Ola Bola, a famous, a hit, okay, a football, uh, we, we love football. And it's about Malaysia's team that won a place in the Russian uh, Olympics, but of course we didn't go because we, the, the, there was a ban, we, we, we joined a ban. And you know who scored in the movie, who scored the goal? Because I'm stupid Malay, right? But actually, the guy who scored was a Chinese, it was James Wong from Sabah, assisted by Hassan Sani, a Malay guy. All right, so why do you want to change this narrative? And then for what reason? Oh, they say, oh, it's just a movie. But to us, it's not a movie. It shows clearly again, you know, that what you're trying to do. You're trying to twist the narrative, the history, and all that, and denying Sabah, Sarawak, the rights to be recognized as a nation under Malaysia, okay? So, um, so what are the stumbling block to, to national unity? Of course, we are now trying to fight for more autonomy. And um, if, if we want to gel together as a nation, I think, I, I, I think uh, Dato' Nor Farida already mentioned just now, a MA 63, Malaysia Agreement 63, but many of us still don't know what Malaysia Agreement 63 is all about. It's an agreement which we sign United Kingdom, Northern Ireland, Singapore, Sabah, and Sarawak to form Malaysia, okay? Please read the agreement because this is a very important document which is getting hotter and hotter. And at the end of the day, if we don't recognize that, we will probably split up as a nation. Not maybe physically in that sense, but in mentality, mentality wise, in, in cooperation, integration, we will split up because East Malaysians are already fed up. And um, what's in the the main context or the main agreement of the Malaysia Agreement is the rights, the rights to oil. I mean, we're not talking about 5% oil royalty, we're talking about oil rights, okay? And uh, things like um, uh, the right to practice our own religion, the right to collect taxes is clearly stated there that like 40% of the taxes collected by federal government must be returned to Sabah so that we are in control how we use the money. Not, um, you know, some contract to build a cycling track cost four billion and all that, and then uh, you know end, end up in somebody's pocket, right? And then uh, what we get there is cycling path which is broken down and you know can't be used and so on as, as usual. You know when you want to build hospitals here, uh, when you give a contract to build hospitals, they they build they, they give a contract at twenty hospitals, Beaufort, La Sepitang, and all that. But the main contractor is here, and they will submit to another contractor in, in Sabah, and then he will subcontract to another person. So in the end, we get low-quality work, low-quality schools, and so on. Now, everything is being controlled. So we want to take this, this rights back under Malaysia Agreement. And um, bonionization of civil service. Why, why do you guys need to go there and, and, and manage our department? You mean we don't go to school? I mean, we know how to run our own departments, right? Why do I need you? Unless you've got some special skills, you're, you're a top surgeon or what, welcome, you know, I, I need you. But if you're like an ordinary teacher, why do you send a teacher from here to teach, uh, you know, mathematics and science there? I mean, we have the same people. We have jobless people there who, who are dying for jobs to teach. So uh, we want to control our education. Uh, we want to teach more in English, we would speak more in English, like Sarawak already went ahead and uh, and uh, uh, the late Adnan Satem uh, has declared that uh, they, can, they can correspond in English in, in terms of government, write English and, and speak in English at, at, the, at the government level. So what, we are way ahead of you, all right, in terms of these agreements and all that, because today you're still fighting about religion, education, speaking in English and all that. We already stated that in our, in our contract, okay, that we want this. So, um, um, so if we recognize that and um, work together and all that, and using the pressure from East Malaysia, using the Malaysia Agreement, maybe some of these issues can, uh, you know, come over here in a positive manner, and um, maybe say, for example, you know, um, uh, we can teach English more in in the education system. So. 
Um, this is um, what we feel uh, uh, from the East Malaysian uh, point of view, and um, we we um, are more frank in in what we say, what we what what we do, and all that. Um, we have no issues about talking about religion, uh, about virtually anything. I I, I can't say um, this will this will uh, go go down. Uh, the same path in the future because we get influence from this side and and uh, what not where you know we get teachers from Kedah being uh, sent to to Sarawak example and they're trying to convert uh, some Christians into um, uh, to become uh, Muslims and all that we have uh, we have that issues but we have to be guarded and um, <clears throat> I think what what we need to do first of all we have to recognize each other's history. We have to have one history, and we have to have one major celebration, um, uh, like the Malaysia National Day, Malaysia Day, okay? I mean, can you imagine, we put up our flags before August 31st to, to, sell, to, to follow federal government uh, in terms of celebrating Merdeka, and that flag has to last up to September 16th. By the time you reach September 16th, it's already faded, torn, and all that. So that's what Malaysia is all about. Faded, torn, you know, and uh, uh, looking very dejected. We don't want that, right? We want to be proud Malaysian, united together. We respect each other. We respect each other's religion, and um, we respect each other's culture. If you have time, the next big event is uh, the Harvest Festival. Please come and join us. And uh, Chin Hot say he loves to come over to Sabah during those times because it's a lot of fun and merriment. We don't talk about religion. We talk, don't talk about race. And we talk about one, one nation. So I, I told the Penang crowd, uh, Chin Hot was there, that we are more Malaysian than you guys. Okay? Because we celebrate Malaysia Day. You don't celebrate Malaysia Day. So we're Malaysians, right? We are proud to say we're Malaysian. We, there is no such thing we want to see from Malaysia. That's not true, okay? We have our unique circumstances. If you talk about Sabah, we, we, are, we are claimed by a foreign country. We have been invaded by a foreign country in, uh, a few years ago, all right? So we are a very unique nation by itself, right? And um, we like to be recognized as that. But most of all, we want to be united, integrated, and uh, unity is something that we should discuss as a subject in schools and in the forum studies. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. John. Um, it's very interesting that there is uh, another aspect of unity that we West Malaysians tend to overlook. So uh, really is welcoming to hear uh, what Dr. John uh, said about the situation of how the Sabahan feels when we actually undermine the Malaysian day. Um, and something else that Dr. John said just now is just light as park in my mind. And that he said that wondered whether issues like one MDB unites the people. Makes me wonder, do we need more of <laughs> Anyway, uh, let's hear after this from Mr. Dao Zhang Tan. He's an expert in several religions, so I'm sure he's going to handle unity with regards to the religious aspect in the country. Welcome. Uh, thank you, uh, moderator, Tan Sri. Uh, just now, uh, our dato was saying that uh, he's very really fearful because speaking in, uh, in front of our imminent uh, guests and uh, participants here, uh, actually, I'm even more, not just fearful, but I'm actually trembling here. Thanks to the uh, organizer for having this rostrum so that I, I'm, I cannot be seen as trembling here. <laughs> I'm uh, not an academia, uh, academia or a researcher. 
I'm more from my personal observation in my many years involvement in a religious organization uh, as the president of the Federation of Taoist Association Malaysia. I'm also involved in uh, JKMBKA. So uh, just now we talk about Sabah. Sabah is our favorite place of visit. It's, uh, we always go to Sabah because Sabah is a role model for Malaysia. To be Malaysian. And actually, we also celebrate Malaysia Day also. Though not in the big scale, but uh, we celebrate here in uh, Malaysia. Uh, well, uh, in our, our days, uh, there's English medium school, see? That's why uh, when Tan Sri says that, uh, why come, how come now, you know, there's no Chinese in the uh, government schools? Uh, during our days, in the English schools, we have Chinese, Indian, Malays, and uh, we hear also from the Sultan, His Highness, the Sultan of uh, Selangor, that he was proposing that the schools be made English medium. Of course, I think that uh, would not happen. And of course, uh, I'm so happy when I heard uh, being invited to be a panel speak panelist here from G25, because uh, you are really, uh, your efforts are commendable. Uh, you're really courageous and very outspoken. And many times when there are issues, uh, you are the ones who uh, actually give us the con uh, consolation that we are in the uh, beautiful nation of Malaysia. The Malaysians are all together. So uh, I think Malaysia, will st the unity in the country will still remain firm. We have just have to uh, do our part, each our part, right? So uh, not just myself, uh, FTAM, uh, the Federation of Taoist Association, MCC, BJST, and so many other uh, civic organizations are behind your uh, group of 25. I think we should give them a big round of applause for all they've done for the country. So I, uh, we are talking about Malaysia Day. Uh, I, I was as so as the country. So it's Malaysia, Malaya, Malaysia Day. <laughs> Malaya, we start off with Malaya, and then in 1963, we become Malaysia. So uh, I believe uh, many of us uh, at my age would have the experience of uh, staying together with all the communities. I, I was born in the Malay Kampung uh, here in KL. and. Uh, we, we mix around very, very well with all the Malays, the Indians. I used to go to my neighbor, because at the time we were quite poor. We can't even afford a TV. So we always watch TV in the, our neighbor, who are all Malays, uh, uh, sitting in their home and then uh, watching TV and even sharing the food. Uh, that is the spirit that we experience when we go to Sabah or we go to Sarawak. The same Malaysian spirit that uh, we experience uh, 60, 60 years ago. So, uh, I said Malay because back then, there's no such thing as, uh, you know, you talk so much about Islam uh, or religion, see? We are, we are as one nation, as Malaysian. So, we, we seldom define on religious ground or religious uh, sensitivities, see? It's so much different from now. And we get invited to all the wedding kanduris, uh, even the Hararaya. And I especially like all the sit-up performance during the uh, kanduri, you know. <laughs> it was uh, quite a good show. And also, we always invite them. My mom would, uh, uh, for our New Year, invite them to our house to celebrate together. And we make sure that, my mom would make sure that uh, we get our neighbors to uh, cook the... Uh, uh, rendang ayam and all the Malay delicacies, as well as, of course, the Chinese uh, delicacies. So that is the type of uh, uh, Malaysia's uh, environment at the time, uh, 60 years ago, uh, or rather maybe 50 or years ago. So uh, times are changing. But then again, uh, we feel that uh, because of this Islamization, uh, things are getting different. Uh, we are very sensitive on uh, many aspects of uh, our life uh, that touches on religious issue. 
So I, I think that uh, I believe, uh, if I correct me, I stand to be corrected, uh, it could, could be during the reign of Tun Mahathir and uh, that's Sri Anwar Ibrahim, whereby we feel, I feel, that the Islamiz Islamization process in the country uh, is, you know, uh, very fast. We're getting very, uh, very much Islamized in everything, in every sector, including uh, banking, etc., etc. And of course, uh, the problem started uh, with the, you know, amendments to our federal constitution, one to one, one a, when uh, issues that involve. Uh, the Muslims and the non-Muslims, the uh, conversion cases, some of the judges will abdicate their judicial duties and uh, Islamic issues are tried uh, by a Sharia court, uh, thus uh, creating a lot of problems with uh, conversion that MCC, BSC always have to uh, deal with. Of course, uh, and we of course, uh, these are all brought to the federal court, and we find that uh, the the bottom line is we, we believe uh, that the federal constitution is the supreme law of the land, and uh, we should uh, all support that, and make sure that uh, it remains such the very uh, core of our uh, nation building. Now, there's also the uh, story about uh, Indira Gandhi, uh, Miss Ganga Devi, and of course, uh, body snatching cases involving when uh, certain people convert without informing their family members. And uh, on top of that, some of them still live their normal life as a Hindu or etc. And when they passed away, then, uh, because I think it's in the IC, right? Uh, that's the case of uh, body snatching that we call it. So we hope, uh, and during JKMBK, we try to see how best to solve all these issues, including uh, to maybe to first inform the family members that a certain person wants to convert to Islam, so that such cases uh, will not happen again. And the other thing that I feel that is uh, tearing the fabric of the uh, uh, unity in the country is that of the uh, RUU 355. Uh, this is a private member bill proposed by past president Haji Awang, uh, whereby they want to enhance the punishment allowed under RUU 355. And that is uh, from the limit of three years imprisonment, fine of 5,000, whipping of up to six lashes, to 30 years imprisonment. 100,000 fine, 100 lashes. So these proposed amendments could at least enable three hundred laws to be enforced, uh, like uh, Zina, Zakaf, which is the forced execution, execution of Zina, and the consumption of alcohol are enabled. So uh, this is why uh, we are um, protesting, of, uh, we are opposing such, not because uh, we are interfering in the matters of the Islamic Sharia, but this thing to us we is seen as a first step towards Malaysia becoming an Islamic state, a theocratic Islamic state, and that it will certainly affect all Malaysians, irrespective of whether they are uh, Muslim or they are non-Muslim. And what, what bothers me is that some of the uh, Muslims are actually telling us that uh, we gave you, uh, you know, citizenship and uh, why are you now interfering in the way we are administering our Islamic Sharia? So after 60 years, as a citizen, I believe all of us, uh, not just the Malay, but all Malaysians fought for independence. Uh, fought during sacrifice during the Japanese occupation, and we are here as equal citizens. We should not be made to feel that uh, we are second class, right? So I, this this new trend is quite alarming. So uh, as the federal constitution is the highest uh, 
law in the country. I think uh, there it will be against its ultra-virus, our federal constitution, to have two sets of criminal law. So that is our main concern. Uh, Malaysia is one of the very few countries uh, that do not have a department of religion. Uh, in most countries, they have one department that deals with religious matter, but not here in Malaysia. In Malaysia, we only have Jakim, Jawi, and many other state uh, Islamic institutions. So uh, matters of the uh, non-Islamic do not have a department to, uh, uh, to solve them or to assist them or to uh, help them in the uh, development of the religion. Uh, so there's also this division in the uh, AG's chamber that will look into Sharia compliance of law. So we find that every aspect of our life will be Islamized in that sense. And uh, one example I can quote is uh, there's a piece of land that is designated for non-Islamic uh, use, we call it Ribi, yeah? Rumah Ibadat Bukan Islam. And that land was converted without even the knowledge of the state ESCO members or even some of the officials of the Jabatan Tanah uh, dan J GP, uh, Jabatan Tanah dan Galian. It was converted to a surau when they already have a very big um, mosque in that area. There's a uh, Alam Impian. So these things are happening, you see the influence of Jawi in all aspects of our life. Although, of course, Hesi, Hesi is in Slango, this is the Non-Islamic Affairs uh, Committee, has uh, op uh, op uh, opposed this, but then I think uh, now the alternative is try to find an alternative land. And recently, last year, the guidelines, Garis Panduan, for place of worship other than Islam. Uh, there has been a lot of inputs, uh, I believe, from Jawi as to the control of height of place of worship of uh, Ribi and uh, the control of distance, the, the distance from a Malay dwelling, the distance from a, a surah or a mosque. So this is uh, to the non-Muslim, it's an infringement on our rights. It will affect our development as Malaysian in Malaysia. But of course, uh, HESI has already proposed that certain restrictions have to be removed and uh, restrictions are to be changed, but it's yet to be endorsed by the uh, highest authority of the state, this the KMN, MKN. But I believe, uh, all in all, uh, Malaysia will continue to be very united, uh, there'll be harmony. Because why? The bottom line is Malaysian. Be Malaysian. We are very uh, peace-loving. We are very kind. We always look after each other. The fish burning issue, we can see that it's the most committee who come out and help the church to clean up and things like that. So uh, this shows that we as Malaysian are united, we as Malaysian are very harmony, and we believe that we should all do our part in our own very small way to promote this harmonious uh, Malaysia. Uh, what we can do is uh, we should follow the golden rule. I believe uh, many of us have heard about the golden rule. Do unto others what you want others to do unto you, and do not do unto others what you do want others to do unto you. So uh, you need to have more interaction, like uh, what uh, Tansfer said. The, in Ireland, they do not mix, they do not uh, uh, engage each other. That's why we need to have more uh, civic uh, societies like your uh, activists, that we have this opportunity. Like today, we have all races here, uh, trying to see how best we can make Malaysia a harmonious society. I think each of us uh, contributing in a very small way, uh, starting with our neighbors, right? Uh, if we are friendly and helpful to our neighbors, from there we just keep on spreading, right? I always believe in doing things small, 
start small from the very basic unit that's ourselves right and from there i think if we have the same spirit we can uh, really make malaysia uh, harmonious and uh, uh, a beautiful society uh, we continue to enjoy the uh, unity that we had always had uh, so i think uh, most importantly is the engagement and uh, in Malaysia, I think the government also is quite uh, serious about promoting unity. That's why we mentioned about JPNIN, which is the National Unity and Integrity Department, and also the formation of the JK and PKA. Uh, we have been engaging with all the uh, different religion, uh, members of different religion, and trying our best to find what is the most uh, suitable way of trying to reduce the friction, overcome the problem faced by the various uh, religious community. So I believe, and uh, certainly, uh, all of us can do our part to make Malaysia a uh, united, united and harmonious society. Thank you. Mr. Dao Sang Tan is really uh, an optimistic, very positive way of thinking. Um, um, he's really a man of religion to believe that whatever it is, we all can stay united. Uh, that's really refreshing. Um, he also mooted the idea that perhaps um, our country should just have one uh, type of school. And then he qualified himself to say, but it can never happen. I think if we want it, we should make it happen. After all, Singapore has only one type of school. So... I, I strongly believe it's the politicians who love to divide us all. They're doing, they're the ones who's doing it. Okay, now let's listen to Mr. Gerald Joseph. I'm sure he's going to take it at the angle of human rights, perhaps. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, friends, uh, those from the Dan Line Line and those from the Bukan Dan Line Line. So we never, we never know actually which side we belong to because on any part you go, at one moment you will be the one with power in the majority and another moment you will not, you know. So I think Malaysia, sometimes I wonder whether we forget because we are quite a champion of minorities outside Malaysia the government, the people, you know, the Rohingyas, the Syrian, which actually is an attestation to understanding the concept of there is no done line line. But bila balik kampung ni kita lupa, that's our problem. So, uh, do we stand a chance for a different type of Malaysia? I think uh, Dr. Johan has spoken about uh, Sabah, Sarawak being a beacon of hope, and I still think it is. Uh, I would say that the politics of race as practiced, as uh, Tansri said, by politicians, uh, is not the, the same game pattern in Sabah and Sarawak. But sadly, I must say, uh, that same principles are applied when it comes close to election. The concept of tribalism to appeal to the tribal uh, kin for vote uh, happens. And I can give you one example. We used to work very strong on the Bakun Dam many years ago in, in Sarawak. Everybody was so angry. I went through all the 15 longhouses. Everybody was equally angry about the dam coming to take away their village. Come election, there were seven candidates, seven candidates all from different communities, Uket, Kenya. And when you total the six uh, minority groups, they were bigger than the incumbent Barisan National. So, sadly, this divide and rule tactic that Tansri was saying is, uh, is a convenient uh, tool that is used, even that side. But it's a different fashion eh, than what, what, what is sold here. Uh, the next, please. 
just to because this word racism, uh, someone say, oh, this is not in not in Malaysia. Racism is South Africa. So I'm, this is a convention on racial discrimination. Uh, the definition: any distinction, exclusion, restriction, or preference. And this is where our discussion starts. We have enough stories of how difficult, how challenging this is, because because you are from a different ethnic group, national, then you become the Dan line line. Ini bukan Sabah and Sarawak saja marah. Our orang asli here also say, why are we in the Dan line line category? Can't we put a box? If you want to really have a box, then put a box without anything. We will write whatever we want. But susah lah sini. So it is the purpose of nullifying or impairing the recognition and enjoyment or exercise on an equal footing. I think this is an important part. That's where the human rights appeal comes in, you know. What's different between you and I? I mean, we're all Malaysians, we're all human beings, so there must be a common standard. Uh, next, we can skip this. I think you understand what happens when somebody is superior and one is not. There's enough stories in the world, not far from here. The Rohingyas suffer because of a majority minority. We had a history of South Africa. In Malaysia, smaller communities are suffering because the majority decide, uh, decides the script. So we know this story. Next, please. So, you know, when I have, uh, I was, this morning I just came from a meeting with the Orang Asli Network, the Jaringan Kampung Orang Asli Sunanjung Malaysia. So this is a question. Who came first? You know, there's always this politician will say, balik, manan mo balik, eh? So you can balik to India, China, or Indonesia, or wherever. So these photos are actually, the first photo, the one before that was the, the Perak man. I mean, the one just before? Yeah, this is the Perak man that was found, uh, I think he's about 25,000, he or she, in Greek. Uh, the community predates any of the tick box that we've been talking about. Uh, next, this is in Guanya, 40,000, also predates any of us here. So if we play the game of who came first, then all of us should be prepared to balik somewhere. Lah. But so we cannot, we will never end. We can go and go and search. And they recently found some uh, X and tool that is 1.83 million years old in Malaysia. I'm shocked, you know, when I was looking through. So, so the game of who came here first is no more. It's we are here, we are Malaysians, and this land belongs to us. Next, please. So this is the tick box that we've been trying to fight for, you know. The Wawa San 20 has this tick box, Aku Bangsa Malaysia. Dr. Johan spoke about the confusion of what is Malaysia Day also still not resolved. But Dr. John, you're right. Uh, we tried to organize an event on Malaysia Day uh, the last uh, two years ago. So we thought at night we should do something, get a big crowd. We even got uh, Zainal Abidin to sing. So we thought, oh, that's a sure, sure success story if you got Zainal Abidin. But the hall, is, is, the hall is also half of this hall. Uh, only half was packed. Because the word Malaysia Day does not resonate with that energy that this is the main day to celebrate for Malaysia. So I, I totally take your point that this concept of Malaysia is still a, a, a work in progress. Next, please. This was what I, needed, I had to confront with when I was an organizer of the World Conference Against Racism in Durban in uh, 2001. The question, you are not a racist, right? I mean, this is a question we need to answer based on the definition. No? How many of us loudly pronounce but silently allow it to happen loudly we disagree this should not happen but yet feel there's a privilege that comes with the, our historicity there's a privilege that comes with the majority there's a privilege that comes because this is how malaysia should be the so-called social contract we need to answer this if we're going to move away from this brand that is a brand created from britain and now totally embraced uh, by the last 60 years uh, by the political parties. Next. There's some good news. I think uh, uh, Mr. Tan has shared some. Uh, Dr. Johan also, uh, many youth groups are discussing this issue very loudly. Uh, recently, there's this whole uproar about the, you know, I don't know whether you know, there is still Slango, Slango Indian Football uh, League. There's a Chinese football league. The day I went, uh, Taiwan University came, Hong Kong University was playing with the Selango Chinese youth something. I mean, even at the football that Dr. Johan spoke about, James Wong, the uniting factor that brings us to the national level, 
at the grassroots, it's still going via these segments. So I think we need to stop and say enough is enough. There is no justification why you need a, this association of, uh, of, of football teams according to uh, ethnic or, or race groups. I think uh, when there was an uproar of uh, what the lecturer said about Indians sitting uh, together, the uh, university took very strong and fast action. I mean, there's some, some good reactions happening and then there this thing called moments of unity. I think we can find good stories, but it's not enough. These are too symbolic, too far in between. It's not systematic, it's not institutionalized. Uh, but what is institutionalized is uh, race-based uh, politics. Next. And this is a very famous photo. Huh? Always national unity in Malaysia is uh, Rukun Tatanga style, to eat food together. So the very fact G25 uh, organized us with round tables and food. I mean, you know, the message is, let's eat together, <laughs> which is a Malaysian thing. So. Uh, they have a lot of these durian parties, and I put the word there, now has national unity cost gone up because durians have gone up so much? Will it cost us now to bring people together? But this is good events. We will eat the durian, we will say hello, but then when we go back to our corners, that thinking still uh, pervades our, uh, our lives. You know? Next, please. So maybe some reminders of our struggle uh, of different communities, the two-set standard, you know? where you find toilet signs for Muslims, non-Muslims. Uh, everything is now, as Dr. Johan put it very gently, you know. Here, everything, we are becoming so sensitive. Sabah still, uh, you can talk, can laugh out of it, but here, people are trying to divide. Uh, even terminologies for food brand, a and Muslim, non-Muslim cups, you know this, paint brushes. Uh, the laundrette uh, became a big uproar, both uh, in Moan, I think also in the north. Uh, even more recently, uh, uh, hotel industry, even it's not just policies, but even the private sector, where women who are covered in Tudong not allowed to work, there's something we did not know, now it's coming up. You know? So different brands of people thinking what should and what should not be. Next. These are some of the photos of what I said earlier, uh, of the pain that continues, and people are thinking they are doing good. People are thinking that they are living either to their concept of what is it to be a Malaysian, a Muslim, a Malay, a Hindu, and they are deciding what should and what, what should not be. And I think the Sultan of Johor asked a very pertinent question. If we go down the road of the laundromat division, when will it ever stop? When will we stop sharing, even sitting together, breathing the same air, exchanging money, you know, money is all tainted, soil, when will we stop? When will that purity, purity game uh, divide us totally where we live in separate worlds? So I think that was a very stark, painful question that we need to, uh, to answer. Next, please. So I think at the political side, uh, Tansri, you're very right. Uh, the, you just Google, you can find enough of the comments that keep repeating. Uh, I mean, it's just some examples. Um, you know, this, you have to choose this party because we need to safeguard Bumiputra, the other side won't safeguard, you know, there'll be... So, uh, so equality is not a good thing in Malaysia because you need to defend the rights of Bumiputra, according to Ismail Sabri. Uh, Zaid Samidi uh, mentioned Mahate's Kerala ancestry. Mahate mentioned Najib's Bugis ancestry. So that's why I'm saying <laughs> we will never stop and uh, we will all find something to say about each other. But what does it do to us? It doesn't really help us go forward. Next. Uh, and then this, this appeal to try to now expand Bumiputra all for, for what? You know, instead of dismantling, dismantling that the equality principle is actually our mainstay. Yeah? Because affirmative action actually is not a bad thing, it's a human rights principle, but it's supposed to not be a permanent feature. It's supposed to be temporary, it's supposed to be specific, it's supposed to be targeted, and it has to, has to reach an objective. You know? so, so you cannot want to suddenly rename everybody and give them special privileges uh, uh, for time immemorial. Ibrahim Ali, I don't have to mention, Prakasa have asked for different things. So, a list of examples. Next, please. Advertisements, even private companies. Eh? So even there, you see the body shop thing, I think. There's a Chinese-only job vacancy, Watson's Malaysia advertisement about the blackface. We got a big reaction. 
I mean, just open the newspaper or online paper, but if you want to rent a room now, or rent a house, there are, there are specifications for you. What kind of people I'm looking to live in my house? Because for whatever reasons, they're more comfortable with their own kind. This has become norm, and this is actually criminal in some other jurisdiction and country. We need to break this, you know. We need to say that you can live. Of course, I have a different way of practice. We don't impose, but we can actually be in the same space. These are the tough issues that... The reason I'm putting this out is because this is one of my proposals. The only way we're going to come this is we call this out. By not speaking about it, not repeating it, not saying it, people get away. I think uh, too few times... This comes up by a news piece article that lasts for a day and a half and two, and then our journalists will be busy writing the next piece. So this, the, uh, this goes off uh, from our memories. Next. So my final slide. Next. Next, yeah. So these were the questions I asked when I was preparing for the World Conference Against Racism, you know. What is our progress on these questions? Institutional race-based discrimination. Are there policies that need to be dismantled? Are there schooling systems? Are there university uh, policies that need to be dismantled? That's the first question. Second question, media. Look at the front pages, the back pages, middle pages. And this is going to get worse. Whenever elections come, media suddenly forget their, their ethical role and responsibility. So use of media to perpetuate racism. What's our progress on stopping that? What's our progress on education on non-discrimination? I think Mr. Tan and Dr. Jo uh, Dr. Johan mentioned about in schools. Do we have discussion that's saying we are all equal, or we are actually reminded that we are not equal? What is the message that the young people get from school? Huh? I, I, I just got my niece to remind me in uh, typing, Conman, you know, she, she comes and says, oh, the teacher said this, and I'm sure every of us would have heard this kind of small stories of what the teacher said, what the teacher did, that is implicitly saying how come we are differentiated. Uh, documenting racial discrimination, I think we need to keep at it to say this is not something we celebrate, but we need to bring it down. But the only way to bring it down is to know that it exists. So documentation is important. Racial profiling in law enforcement, there's been always a question uh, why uh, many of the Indian community get arrested or tortured. You know, there's some a big study and discussion happening. You know, then it's linked to social uh, poverty issues, uh, uh, social uh, depression, but we need to study that. Race-based political parties and politics, what do we do with them? I mean, uh, somebody said, but that's freedom of assembly, uh, freedom of association. You have your type of party, but uh, what does Malaysia say about that? Because we need to uh, tackle that. There was a short discussion when Tun Badawi took over after GE12. He said, maybe it's time to think the brand of becoming a more united uh, Barisan National, but I, I don't hear that anymore. And that appeals for all other parties in the opposition also. Who dares break that? The affirmative action needs to be talked about. As I said, it's not sacrosanct. If it's sacrosanct, then it's institutional racism. Human rights say affirmative action is needed. It's a human rights principle, but it cannot be there uh, forever. And I think one of it is sometimes if Malaysia be, is party to an international conference, uh, uh, convention maybe, that's a way to have a systematic discussion. And my final point is then, does this all bring us to... Oh, well, this is the famous uh, ne next uh, Tunku Al Rahman, no? We are all Malaysians. The we are all Malaysians is what we have not captured. We are all differentiated Malaysian. Dan Line Line and Bukan Dan Line Line. And that cannot be. The all Malaysians is what we need to uh, affirm and defend. It's not easy because it's always easier to appeal to popular belief or disbelief, you know. I mean, you know how Trump has worked on that. Every politician will work on that. So I hope that, my hope is still the, the last slide, which is uh, that we remain steadfast to that we are Bangsa Malaysia. Thank you very much. I really like that list of what to do. Um, Mr. Gerald Joseph uh, said of us needing common standard for all. And, and, and that, I, I recall what Datuk Johan said uh, with regards to all the various celebrations. I remember you saying, 
why don't we as a nation have one big celebration for all? Um, you know, before I used to get, um, well, not very fond of American culture, even though my daughter lives there. But when I think of it now, they have their Thanksgiving Day. And you know, whatever religion they, they are, they celebrate. The Indians have Thanksgiving and have curry turkey. It's still turkey. You know, everybody eats turkey, cook in their own way. So maybe it's something we should think of. So now uh, I would like to open the floor. We can only take a few questions, but uh, please, as usual, uh, give us your name. Um, yes, I have the first person. Please. Thank you very much. Uh, Country. Uh, firstly, my name is uh, Abdul Aziz Abdullah. I am a seafarer. I sailed the seas for 10 years. So, number one, I would like to compliment uh, G25 for organizing this uh, forum. It's a very uh, insightful and also uh, something that we always hope to hear. Second is, I have met Tansri many times, but this is the first time I'm seeing you in Tudong, and you look more charming. <laughs> so, I hope you will keep it on always. Next is, I want to address the question by uh, Dr. Johan. So, since I'm a seafarer, I have to explain to you why this cruise Muyubah ferry did not continue. Number one, typical of the Malaysian way of doing things. Instead of going to build a new ferry, which is acclimatized to Malaysian weather, we went to buy a second-hand ferry, which was operating in the Scandinavian countries. And they don't have aircons fitted on that ferry. So we bought the ferry, came back, and then realized that, oh, no aircon. So refurbish her. So that's the technical side. Now, another thing is the, the journey takes about one and a half days. And uh, they, they discovered when they first started the, 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 the ferry that people didn't know what to do for one and a half days on the ferry. So what they did, they introduced this one arm bandit. Then somebody said, oh, haram. So they had to dismantle one arm bandit. And uh, many of the non-Muslims non didn't want to go on board because, number one, there was no entertainment. And number two, many people got seasick. They forgot about it. So ultimately, the ferry burned down, and that's why it was never there. And of course, thank God, Air Asia came in. Second thing is I want to address the, the remark by uh, Datin this morning about uh, uh, the Sabah, especially being, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, uh, forgotten by the central government. I had the opportunity to work in Sarawak for six months, and I have this to say. I blame the local politicians for the local suffering, what they're suffering. I had the opportunity to drive to the rural areas of Sarawak. I saw the grandiose mansions where the politicians were staying, and I noticed how miserable the local uh, tri tribal peoples were staying. So please do not blame this side of the South Ch India, of South China Sea, Blame also your own politicians. They were the ones who were responsible for putting your people where they are now. Yes, we have our faults, but blame your own people first. You see the mentions of the ministers and look at the, the way the local people left. I was driving from Miri to, uh, to, to, to Cebu. I forgot that I was in Sarawak. I realized that my, 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 my patrol was finishing and I didn't know. It was, luckily, there was Bakanu. And we managed to find a small tank with oil there. Otherwise, I would have been stuck up in, in, in the jungle. So this, this is a situation there. But overall, I agree with Dato' Johan, Sabah, Sarawak are the best reflection of true Malaysians. You can go and eat in a Chinese uh, coffee shop, but there will be a small compartment where the Muslim lady is selling me or something, and we have no this thing. And I always tell my children, look upon yourself as Malaysians first, everything else second. And if everybody can do that, there's no problem. Don't let the politicians, yes, country, you are right. Don't let them divide us. Thank you. Any more? Yes. <clears throat> Good afternoon, uh, Tan Sri moderator, esteemed speakers. My name is Karen Lai, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer of the Slanger Women's Empowerment Institute. I have uh, three interventions or kind of reflections to make particularly in relation to Gerald's presentation. 
Firstly, it hit me uh, like a blow to the stomach when you said that equality is not a good thing in Malaysia. And as a women's human rights advocate that's been uh, advocating for gender equality for the past 12 years or so, you know, it's true. Equality doesn't sell. And why is it that we don't think it's a good thing? The second thing, I think what it comes down to is about us checking our privilege. You have discrimination on the one hand, but there are also instances, I mean, discrimination is a, is a double-edged sword in the sense that when one person is discriminated against negatively, the flip side of it is that there's positive discrimination. Take me, for example. I moved to Shah Alam from Penang a few months ago, and it was not a problem for me to find a flat to rent. But it breaks my heart that my Indian counterpart would find that all that more difficult. And that, to me, is obscene in this day and age, and in this supposedly democratic country, an equal country. And finally, I don't think that the, the national unity opposite of diversity is homogeneity. I personally think diversity is a good thing. In other words, Aku maybe bangsa apa apa je, tapi aku okay di Malaysia. That's why I think. Thank you. Yes, please. Thank you. May I refer the panelists to Article One Hundred and Fifty Three of the Federal Constitution, in particular, Clause 1. It says, it shall be the responsibility of the young Tibetan Agong to safeguard the special position of the Malays and natives of any of the states of Sabah and Sarawak. Unfortunately, many people stop there. The clause goes on to read, and the legitimate interests of other communities in accordance with the provisions of this article. And I think that has been a much neglected provision. But the way that clause is worded, it is not very wide ranging, but it makes provision basically that when assisting Malays and those from Sabah and Sarawak who are Bumiputras, that the government agencies must not take what is already held by people of other races. To give one example. Now about the Tudong Madam, recently there had been some discussion in the media of hotels being discriminatory towards women who wear the scarves. I remember demonstrations outside the Singapore High Commission because Singapore schools, government schools, did not allow students to wear the scarf. But I would like to put this to you. In Brunei, I understand every girl, whatever her religion, must wear the scarf when she goes to a government school. Please think about it, members of the panel. People here can protest about the rules against those who wear the scarf. What about it being the other way around, that the scarf is imposed on those of other religions? There have been instances here in Malaysia too. I remember a senior police officer tried to defend his forces imposition of the scarf on non-Muslim women. But please think about Britain. A Sikh schoolboy who was expelled from school for wearing his turban with the assistance of the Race Relations Board took his case to court and won his case. And the Race Relations Board, being mindful of there being a fair contest, told the school headmaster, we will pay your legal fees. You engage a Queen's Council of your choice, and we will pay. They wanted to see a fair contest. That is something to admire. But I understand, no? initially, the Queen's Council represented that headmaster. But when the case went to the House of Lords, the headmaster told his Queen's Council, I will conduct the case myself. I've lived long enough with this case. I'm familiar with the law and the facts of this case. But unfortunately, he lost. It's very, very stressful for a lawyer to appear against a lay person. You know, he thinks, you know, what if I lose against a lay person? Members of the panel, what are your observations? Thank you. Uh, Madam Chairman and members of the panel, my name is Lim Heng Seng. Uh, thank you for giving me the chance to come here and also to present my views. 
I would like to take up the point about education being a part of the problem, or maybe Tan Sri probably thinks the whole part of the problem. Now, I do not think that merely having separate schools is a problem. In Malaysia, what we are seeing today is what is peculiar to us, which is the teaching of Islam in a way which is very divisive. Let me give you two examples. I have a friend from Sarawak, all right? and he told me, he said, Mr. Lim, I'm very worried, I'm very, it's very concerning. My son comes home one day and tells me, Abba, Abba tak boleh kawan dengan orang itu tau, orang Cina itu. He says, kenapa? Oh, Ustaz mengatakan, kalau kita kawan dengan kafir itu, tak boleh. Orang kafir itu tidak boleh percaya. One example, my wife works in an SMK. And one day, several Malay girls came up to her and said, Cikgu, Cikgu, uh, kenapa Cikgu bad sangat? She was very surprised. She said, kenapa tanya soalan macam tu? Oh, Ustazah kata, orang oh, kafir tak boleh percaya. Eh, tapi, Cikgu baik. Now, what is going on in our schools? doesn't matter if it's a Malay school. I believe we can have good education there. We can produce good people there. This is what's wrong. I think we can have the best schools, and yet, if the mindsets of our young people are being reprogrammed in the name of God, this is what is seriously undermining our country. Now, we've got to Sabah and Sarawak. I've worked there seven years. And I can tell you, there are very deep sentiments against what is going on. Now, because of the West Malaysian kind of problem, the friend I mentioned to you is a Muslim learner and was very worried about it. I call it the WMD. In terms of the kind of poisonous teaching being fed into the minds of our young. Wabak Malaysia Darat. West Malaysian disease. This is what is going to undermine the last bastions of national unity in our country. And I can tell you, I didn't spend six months in Sarawak. I spent seven years there. And I worked in Sabah and Sarawak. My wife is a Karazan. Thank you, gentlemen. Good afternoon. I'm Sarojini from NCW. <laughs> Let me first, before I say my piece, give a gentle reminder or advice to Sabah and Sarawak that we enjoyed what you are enjoying 50 years ago, but we did not know what happened when it came along that 50 years. So it can happen to you too just that you are coming behind us. Okay, we are all the time talking about what is dividing us, but we are not talking about what can unite us. Both the opposition and the ruling government, they're not at all talking about what can unite us, which is very, very uh, sad. One of which is when you talk about affirmative action, why can't both the parties say, look, we are for it, but we are for the underprivileged and the poor of all races. Get on and say that. That will cause unity. Number two, teachers. Teachers were the cause of our unity. We are teachers of all races. So children of all races went to them as gods. That caused unity. Now, these same people can say this loud and clear. Now, the third thing is about, uh, of course, the media. Media can play a big part, have advertisements of all races there. Then you have uh, the best of the Malaysians. What happened to that? The best of the Malaysian Indians, the best of the Chinese, the best of the Malays, getting together and doing things. Hi, why have we to get people from overseas? So all these, both, now we have all the parties out there fighting with one another, but none of them are really saying these things. Now these are the things that will cause unity. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Hazi Aiman. I'm a fresh graduate from IIUM. Well, I have a question. Um, we live in a multiracial country that speaks multiple languages. Unlike Indonesia, we don't assimilate into one singular identity, but we rather retain um, our differences, and that includes our different languages. So shouldn't we um, harness this advantage of having multiple languages to be our point of unity and understanding? Like what the late Nelson Mandela once said, if you talk to me, if you talk to a man in a language he understands, that goes to his head. If you talk to him in his language, that goes to his heart. In other words, should our education system consider to implement Bahasa Malaysia that may consist of Bahasa Melayu, Mandarin, and Tamil to strengthen unity, which also act as a double edge to create a progressive Malaysian? That's all. Thank you. Yeah, thanks uh, for the for the comments and questions. Just to clarify with uh, Karen, I don't think I said no to equality. I actually said that that's, <laughs> yeah. Because I think that uh, our struggle is that uh, that line is, they put it too far away, but we have to appeal back to the constitutional provision of uh, Article 8 that equality exists. Affirmative action is not uh, the 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 core content of the framework of constitution. So I totally agree with you uh, on, on that. And uh, I also, uh, thanks for the reminder of Article 153, yes. Uh, that next sentence is always forgotten. Uh, and I think the parliament, the government of the day, the Agong has a duty to look at the legitimate interests of all communities, which means it's a balancing uh, act. It's not to give uh, what is wrongly used as uh, special rights. It's privileges. There's no thing as hak istimewa. It's istimewaan. So this cons a special position. Yeah. So it's a privilege. The position is a privilege, not a right. So I think we need to take that away. But I think also part of after 60 years, this nation has gone through a great development, and that's the success story. And I think. Uh, uh, the sister who spoke about uh, the appeal to uh, an affirmative action on needs, or some use the word class, is I think what Malaysia is ready for now, and everybody totally agree with you uh, on that. So maybe on that I will stop and I'll pass it on to the rest. Yeah, thanks. Okay, uh, as to Brunei, Brunei uh, implemented Hudud, and uh, it cut across the race. You know. Everyone is uh, subjected to hudud. And there's only one registered Taoist society in Brunei. No other. <laughs> so that was uh, much earlier. Now they do not allow that. I think we also know that uh, you're not allowed to celebrate Christmas in Brunei openly. Maybe you can do it within your own house. So that is the scenario in Brunei. But this is not the case for many other countries. As for... Uh, these politicians, when you're a politician, you have to win uh, elections. And to win elections, divide and rule is the best weapon. So how to ask politicians to unite the Malaysians? I think they'll lose everything. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then they'll be like us. So we'll be always be united. And uh, a comment about Sabah and Sarawak. Uh, MCC, BST try to uh, form, we have uh, state branches. We want to form one in Sabah. They are reluctant. You know why? They worry that the Malaysian uh, atmosphere will be uh, transported or brought over to Sabah. So they refuse to form the uh, Sabah branch of the MCC, BST, which I understand. Of course, uh, like just now they mentioned that it can happen to Sabah. We were just like uh, Sabah and Sarawak 50 years ago. That's quite true. So uh, I think that's all. And maybe on uh, why uh, no Chinese in the 
uh, government schools. You know, uh, my son went over to Hatamas, uh, SMK Hatamas, I think <laughs> one of the PIBG, <laughs> PIBG chairman. Eh? So many years in existence, Hatamas do not have a P-O-L, People's Own Language. And my, my children wants to have Mandarin. I have to go and organize and get at least 25 keepers before they allow you to start a P.O.L. And that's the way, is it? When they, they see, there's no P.O.L., they just go to some Chinese school or things like that. So these are the problem. And not just that. You have to get your own teacher. The government won't provide you with a Chinese teacher uh, if, if they can find, which they always say that they can't find. So these are the problems that has been faced by the uh, community. Thank you. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm, I'm trying to first respond to that lady who brought up <clears throat> about the danger of all the evil or ills from <clears throat> Peninsular Malaysia trans being transferred to East Malaysia. We are acutely aware of it, <clears throat> and uh, this is why I joined G25. And um, a lot of people don't know what we do because we don't publicize everything. We do make statements now and again. I, I, if you <clears throat> follow under my articles and all that, I've been writing a lot about Hadi Pass RU355. And um, last year, <clears throat> uh, Dr. Chin Huat here and North Florida and a group of prominent 20 people in Sabah took out a full page advertisement to declare <clears throat> our opposition to RU355. We stuck our, our neck for all to see in, in Sabah, Musa, Aman, whoever, the politicians. And we made a stand that we disagree with it. I've written about, I don't know, 10 articles, even asking for Hadi to be banned from entering Sabah because we have that immigration right to ban somebody, you know? Why, why ban uh, uh, DAP people, whoever in the opposition? And uh, why not, you know, extremist people? So <clears throat> I'm, I'm acutely aware of that. We, we, uh, we all in Sabah are acutely aware of that. So we are fighting against it. But we will fight it in the different fronts, through our organization, through um, various levels of, of, of groups. And we are doing that. So we're not taking things like that for granted. And the second thing, um, uh, what is that now? I'm losing my mind. Um, what was the subject just now? Um, oh, education, okay. Um, <clears throat> you'd be surprised in Sabah, 30 or 35% of the students in Chinese schools are Bumiputras. Okay, and it's a coveted uh, uh, um, place to take in Chinese school. People compete, Bumi Putras compete to enter Chinese school. I don't know why you have that problem. <laughs> okay, and uh, as a very good example, my two children went to Chinese school, okay, at primary level. They can speak Chinese very well. And when they speak Chinese, I don't understand what they're saying, okay, about the parents. And my father started this, and um, he said, China, he, my, my, my father passed away, but he, years back he said, China is going to be the biggest market, right? So you all should learn Chinese. And it spread to all our relatives and all that, and most of our relatives and family speak Chinese. If you, <laughs> um, one of my relations is uh, uh, the foreign minister, Dr. Anif Ahman. His children speak Chinese. They all went to Chinese school. You'd be surprised. So Sabahans are very more foresighted than many of you, all right? And we, uh, <laughs> we, we speak Chinese. So um, I wish I could speak Chinese as well. So yes, we are aware of, 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 of the situation that we are facing today, the onslaught by the side. And then there's a lawyer who said, um, I forgot his name. He mentioned about Malay in the constitution. And that's the problem. They always mention Malay, but not the lion lion. Okay, so when they write the constitution, it's all about Malay. And when they, when they argue among themselves in, in Peninsular Malaysia, it's all about Malay. Malay nationalism, Malay national, national rights or whatever. But then, you know, there's, there's a different group of people in East Malaysia. We, are not, we don't like to classify ourselves as Malay. 
When I was the deputy director of uh, Sabha Foundation, I was in charge of giving scholarship and loan. I decided, I chaired all the, the meeting. We had so many categories, Bumiputra, Muslim, Bumiputra, uh, Christian, uh, so many divisions. But one thing I found out, there's no Malay. We do not recognize Malay in East Malaysia. I mean, in Sabah, we, there's no Malay. The nearest Malay I can find uh, is Brunei Malay. But we all look like Malay, we speak Malay, we, we, we uh, adopt the religion of Islam, we adopt the culture, and uh, I, I think if you, I stand beside any Malay, we're just the same, all right? It's, it's just as a label and name. So, but when it's, when it's written in the constitution as Malay, and then you line line, <laughs> you don't get the same scholarship, or, or you don't get the same privilege as that. So that's just some of the points uh, I'm trying to respond to the crowd. Thanks. Um, I think our, our time is passed by seven minutes. Uh, thank you so much to the three gentlemen. I think you've done an amazing job for this afternoon. Uh, I, I would like to finish off by uh, following what Mr. Tan said just now about the wearing of tudung for all Muslims in Brunei, something as you didn't say. A Muslim woman in Brunei cannot object to the husband marrying more than one wife. They will be sent to jail, apparently. So with that, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Another round of applause for our speakers, please. Thank you so much for that engaging discussion. I also like to thank the audience for your questions and comments. Uh, I'm really loving the session right now. This is what the forum is supposed to be like. Um, before we go on to the next session, we're going to take a quick break, just five minutes break, uh, so you can help yourselves to tea break. And we're going to have our last session after this. Please enjoy your meal.